So, all those injuries, yep, none of those matter. Except for the axe in the head. Which sticks. Which again backs up the validity that Jason is absolutely invincible at this point. I don't care what you do to him, he is not going to die or stay dead. So, this time around, the film is directed by Joseph Zito. Written by Victor Miller, Ron Kurz, Martin Ketroser, and stars the one and only Corey Feldman and Crispin Glover. Jason is played by Ted White this time around. And I know it's called The Final Chapter, but we'll see about that. Okay, so this one picks up right after the last one. And I mean seconds after the last one. But I'm kind of confused on the timeline here because it seems like it takes place much, much later. And while I appreciate the refresher and how well the continuity is kept in these early films, I don't think it's actually necessary. And we get some real talent in this one with people like Corey Feldman and Crispin Glover, like I mentioned earlier. And also, this is the one that introduces us to Tommy Jarvis, who's played by Sir Corey Feldman. <laughs> Tommy Jarvis becomes basically the nemesis of Jason for the next three films, and even fan films. So, later in that same evening, I guess they come to collect bodies from the last film, which made everything age about a year as far as I can tell. So they load Jason up and carry him off to the hospital, or to be more exact, uh, the morgue. And this guy doesn't even stop eating his sandwich and makes some questionable comments about the dead. Real cute girl. Was. Well, she still is. Now while trying to fool around and have a little fun, Jason decides he wants in on the action. I knew this guy was twisted, but I mean, come on. And oh my goodness, what a way to start the film. This is Tommy. He's just a normal kid who loves Halloween masks and everything horror. Here's old Dead in the Sack Glover and his friend Ted. Ominous tombstone. We get Peace Frog sitting by the side of the road, and our new victims can't even be bothered to pick her up. How rude. Hey, honey, you got a sister? I mean, that's just bananas. <laughs> And this movie actually introduces real characters, not just red shirts with character-like traits. So Tommy Jarvis is a peeping Tom, I suppose, and Corey Feldman plays him exactly as any kid would act in that situation, unless he's an absolute psycho. We get to meet the hot set of twins, there's a jump scare, and man do I love Crispin Glover. Everyone decides to go skinny dipping for some reason, which further corrupts young Thomas's mind. And his big sister sucks. They break down on the side of the road, but Tommy is also a genius mechanic, I guess. A stranger comes along, he helps them by getting the car started and stealing all of Tommy's glory. And he starts asking some pretty questionable questions, mostly about who's staying nearby and whatnot, which makes them seem like some kind of a creep. But Tommy's sister invites him in anyway, because she's so impressed, and even introduces him to mom. Now Tom Savini did come back to do some effects work on this film, but he only came back because he thought, hey, we're going to go ahead and kill Jason off. We then get one of the best dance scenes in all film history since Ed Harris in Creepshow. This movie is full of all the hormones. All of them. Every last one of them. I don't think they left one hormone out of this film. This is the most nudity of any of the films in the entire series. I think maybe of any series. Oh, these twins are definitely sluts. You don't mind, do you? But this guy is an idiot. And Ted, you deserve that. This girl goes to the lake at night and is still hung up on Paul while he's back there making out with Miss Sucks a lot. She swims out to the raft and gets stuck, just not in the way that she hoped. 
Good for Crispin Glover. But these twins had better die soon, because they are just awful. That's what you get, Ted. Paul finds his girlfriend and gets a little pegging of his own. Jason, very angrily, breaks this hitchhiker's gun. And it's no coincidence he has a machete. One of the twins gets bored and decides she's leaving, but her sister is clearly not bored and decides she's staying. Take an umbrella. But she doesn't have to be bored anymore. And she finally gets some action Jason style. And he really sticks her. <laughs> Mrs. Jarvis comes home to find the powers out, and it seems that no one's home. And... Jump scare. <laughs> so Tommy and his sister show up. No one's there. The lights are still out. And his sister magically knows where this hitchhiker guy is staying in the woods. Jimmy finds his corkscrew. And Jason finds the other twin. And man, that hurts. I really like that station wagon. So, Tommy's sister and the hitchhiker come to the conclusion that, yes, Jason is still alive for some reason and that it's probably not a good idea that they left Tommy home alone. Ted finally gets some action, but not the kind he wanted. And now that Jason's all dirty, he needs a shower, but finds that it's occupied. Oh yes, very nice, very nice. Is anyone in there? Hello? Oh, smashing. Her boyfriend seems crushed when he finds out it's not her. And she's even more disappointed when she gets the axe. Back at the Jarvis' house, Jason cuts the phone lines, and my goodness, clip those fingernails. Tommy's sister and the hitchhiker, and the dog, go for help, only to find Jason's already crashed the party at the other house. Even the dog has had enough since he jumps out the window and gets the hell out of there. Tommy finds the hitchhiker's collection of newspaper clippings and is really impressed with Jason's childhood haircut. Dead body. I think it's hilarious that all he can say is he's killing me. He's killing me. Run, he's killing me. Classic. Dead body, dead body, climbs out a window. Jason says, fuck that. Brutal. A few nails should keep him out. Wrong. And no shit, it's hammer time. We really need a Shining remake with Jason as the star. Death by TV. I gotta say, Jason really takes a beating in this movie. And if this takes place just a day or two after the last film, that's really saying something. Jason actually runs in this one and just not teleports. What a trooper. She says fuck it and just jumps straight out the window. Jason looks so disappointed. But she's not dead. Just stay down, bitch. And Tommy decides to give himself that haircut he's been needing so badly. Tommy does the best Jason cosplay. Giving them the uh, opportunity that they need to knock his mask off and show us his real face. <laughs> and it's pretty... Yeah. Then Tommy lands the killing blow. And talk about traumatized. Lots to read into here, but I'm not exactly sure what. So Jason's dead, Tommy and his sister's in the hospital, and everything's going to be just fine. Nothing ominous at all here. And that's Friday the 13th. The not so final chapter as you well know and some would say this is their favorite of the series this and part six but for me it's easier to pick the ones that i dislike rather than the ones that i generally like and for now i think it's time for a new beginning see what i did there so like and subscribe and i will see you next time Thank <laughs> you.